Hi, this is Brian Smith, and today is my first video in my daily uh, Linux video series. And today we're going to talk about Linux password hashes. Now, to get uh, terminology right, the first thing to keep in mind is that passwords are not encrypted, technically. They're actually hashed. And a hash is a cryptographic function that's one way. Now, something that's encrypted can be decrypted, while something that's hashed cannot be unhashed, if you will. And the reason why is a hash is a one-way function. So if you take your, let's say our password is Colorado, and if we run it through a hash function, what you'll get is a big, long hexadecimal number. Um, and basically, um, you can't take the hash and reverse it and get back to the password. It's only one way. You take your password, you run it through this hash function, which is a complex mathematical equation, and you get your hash, but it's only one way. You can never reverse the process. So if you have the hash, it's impossible to um, decrypt the hash to get back to the password unless you do a brute force, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Next, we'll talk about how this hexadecimal number, the hash, is stored in the Etsy shadow file. Okay, within our Etsy shadow file, there's eight fields that are used. The first one is user ID. Of the user. Second one is hash, which we'll go into a lot more detail. Um, next one is the last uh, time the password was changed for that user. Then you have the minimum age. Um, in days, basically, you can set it so that the user has to have that password set for like four or five days before they can change it. That would prevent the user from going through and changing their password multiple times so they could reuse an old password or something. The maximum age is the um, maximum number of days that the password can be valid. Like for example, if you said the password max age was 365, then the user would be forced to change the password after a year. Um, the next is the warning. This is the number of days in advance that they'll get a warning that the password is about to expire. Then you have the inactivity period. This is how many days that the password will still be accepted after it's expired. So for example, say your password expired after a year, and you had an inactivity period of 10 days, you would be able to log in after the password had expired after a year for 10 days, but then after the 10 days, you would no longer be able to log in because you had exceeded the inactivity period. And then the last field is the expire date, which you can set if you want for a user. If you know they're going to expire, so you have somebody temporary, um, you could set their date for the password to expire in a few months or whenever they would no longer need to be able to log in. Next, we'll talk about the hash field in a lot more detail. So the second field is the hash, and it's basically composed of three different parts. The first part, um, the dollar sign and the number, will um, specify what type of hash it is. In this example, it's a six, which is in SHA512 hash. You might also see like a one, that would be an MD5 hash, and there's, there's several others. Um, the default in like Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 is a six, which is the SHA512. The next piece you'll see is the salt. Now, the salt is a little bit of extra, um, basically, stuff that's um, combined with the password to make it a little bit stronger than it would be otherwise. So basically, if our, if our password, let's go back and say it was Colorado, um, it's going to combine Colorado and the salt together and then run it through the, uh, the hash function to generate the hash. And the reason why the salt is um, kind of handy, it, it prevents basically a couple of different things from happening. Um, there's an attack called a rainbow table, where you basically have a big table of pre-computated pre hashes, and you can basically match um, a hash in the table, and it'll tell you what the original password was. Well, the salt mitigates that because it makes basically your password much longer um, than it actually is by adding on this extra data. The other thing this will help prevent, let's say um, if there was no salt in use and you had two users who had the same password without a salt, the hash in Etsy uh, Shadow would look identical for those two users with the same password because it would take their, their password, run it through the hash function, <coughs> excuse me, and get the same hash out of it. But if you have a salt in place, it'll take their, their same password the salt is always randomly generated at the time the password is a uh, hash when, when they initially set it. So if you use a hash like this, the two users with the same exact password, 
it'll show up differently in here because the different salts will be combined with their passwords. So that's a little bit of background why the salt um, is important. And the last part um, of the hash field is the actual hash. And depending on which function you use, um, we'll determine how long it is. An SHA-512 hash is pretty long. It would, it would go out pretty far. I just wrote part of it here. And that's the, the three main parts of your um, SE shadow hash field. One other thing you'll, you might notice with the uh, second field in SE shadow is that when you run a, like a user mod lock command to lock a, uh, a user, what this command is doing, all it's doing is editing Etsy Shadow, the second field for the user, and adding an exclamation point um, right there in front of the password hash, which basically renders the whole hash unusable and prevents the user from logging in. If you run a user mod unlock, all it does is go in here and delete out that exclamation point, and then the user um, has a valid password again. So that's all user mod lock is doing in the background there. Okay, now that you've learned all about password hashes, I'm going to show you a practical example of what you can do with this knowledge. Now, a common task for system administrators is, need to ch is needing to change like the root password across, let's say, a thousand servers at once. Now, the way this is commonly done is fairly insecurely. People a lot of times will use clear text, uh, you know, passwords within scripts and stuff like that. They'll maybe use expect. To, to you know to run the password command and, and type you know have expect put in the Cortex password or they might use something like the ch password command and uh, you know pass the uh, the clear text password they want to set it to into this command in a script well now that you know all about hashes um, there's a much more secure way you can do this use this to change passwords using a script so one method would be to use the ch password command but instead of using a clear text password use the minus E flag on it to specify that you're, you're passing it a hashed password. Now this way, your scripts and whatnot only contain the hash of the password, not the clear text password, which is you know, more, much more secure. You still want to be careful. You don't want to advertise the hash out there, but it'd be much better if someone got a hold of the hash rather than the clear text password. And that's why I recommend using this method when you're scripting password changes. And I'm going to show you on a, on a live system a, a, uh, an example of how you can do this. Okay, so if we want a, to use hashes directly in a script to change passwords, the first step we need to do is uh, generate the password hash. And the easiest way to do that, if we're doing like an SHA512 hash, which is what I'm using in this example, is you can just run Python, and then once at the uh, prompt here, you can run import crypt, and then print crypt dot crypt, and then a parentheses, a single quote, and then put in your clear text password here that you want to generate the hash for. Okay. And so what this did is it took our clear text password, Colorado, and it generated the, the hash, and this is directly what would go in that second field in Etsy Shadow. Now you'd only run this on you know one server to generate the hash, and then what you would do is you could have a script that would run on you know hundreds or thousands of, of servers, and what you would do is within the script you'd have something like um, root colon, and make sure you put this in single quotes, and then you'd put the hash for our password. So I'll copy and paste that, and then a single quote to end, and then pipe it to ch password minus e. And so if you ran this within your script on all the servers, the only thing that would be in your um, script would be the hashed password. You would never reference the clear text password within your script. So if we run that, okay, and if we cat etch the shadow, grip for root, okay, you can see that the hash here exactly matches what we just generated and it changed it. And then to test this we can exit out Then we can do um, su dash and then we'll type in Colorado and sure enough it worked. So this is a, a very good option you know to script changing passwords is to do it directly with the hashes. It's much more secure than having your clear text password all over scripts you know they're running on hundreds of different computers so very good way to do it. 
one other kind of cool thing you can do with hashes once you understand how they work is you can copy hashes between servers. Like, um, right now I'm, the, I'm on the LLT server and if I catch shadow and I grep for the user Brian okay here is the user Brian's um, password hash alright and the password happens to be the same as user it's Brian B-R-I-A-N so let's switch over let's copy and paste this uh, password here onto the clipboard and let's go over to this other server now I'm on the CentOS 7 server if I VI well I mean you can do this either way you could, you could directly edit um, Etsy password or probably an even easier way is just to use the change password command probably safer as well so I'm going to say echo root colon I'm going to paste this in this was the hash that I copied and pasted from the other server I'm going to pipe it to change password minus E Okay, so that what that should have done is basically copied the password hash from this server's the user Brian and I just changed the root password to match whatever the password here was which just happened to be Brian and I could have either directly edited the etchy shadow and done it or used ch password minus e same thing would same effect so let me test this out so the password should now be Brian that was the hash that I copied over and there it is it works so you can you know if you have a user on one server and they request a password to be the same on another server you could you know use ch password minus e to just copy over that password hash to a different different server very easy to do well thanks for watching the video if you have any questions please post them in the comments um, if you have any um, suggestions for future videos please post them in the comments as well i'm planning on doing a daily video series on linux so please subscribe so you can be updated on the latest uh, videos i'm posting thanks and i hope you guys have a